Hello and welcome to the Socially Numb Podcast. I am your host, Richie Leahy. Today, we are going to talk about, well, I'm going to pick up with the Science Olympiad photos since I forgot to mention it last week. So, I'm going through some old photos if you're just checking in on the show. Some of the old projects that I used to work on as I'm transitioning my website, I found some old projects. So, the Science Olympiad pictures, we did one more experiment together, and that was an egg drop experiment. So, the, the kids had to build some type of safety device that they would drop, I think it's an egg from 10, 15 feet or something like that. We had a dock in the back of school uh, when I would go, we would just go out back and there would be a huge dumpster. So this dumpster would house the um, garbage for the school. Well, there was like a dock that led up to it. So we had the dumpster moved and there was still like steps and just like a little wooden dock that the kids stood on and dropped their egg. I would say it was 10 feet maybe. I don't remember what the competition was. The competition might have been higher. This was an experiment that I did with kids who were interested to see if anyone could build their own because like I said before in previous episodes, I didn't like the fact that a lot of the Science Olympiad competition was parents and or teachers doing the experiment for the kids and then having them compete for like school glory or something. Like, I like the kids to learn. Because if they don't know how to do it themselves, and they might love science to death, once they get into high school or even college, if it's too late, college, man, because then that would lead to failing out and changing their lives. If they love science so much, let them figure it out and struggle early when they're younger. Don't let them think it's an easy cakewalk. Oh, well, we did that because so-and-so showed me how to do it. Then they get to college where they have to think on their own and they can't do it. So I let the kids think. Some of the ideas were were uh, kind of bad where they just put them in a, the egg in a shoe box with barely any padding and then dropped the shoe box, which meant that there was egg all through the shoe box. We had to throw them away. Some of the kids tried to build like a parachute method. We did have, and this is going by memory, but I would say maybe we had eight, well, we did it by teams that way again so that they can get used to the scientific method and talking it out. But I think we had like three of the eight teams able to have their egg not break. Most of the eggs, like I said, they do break because they're kids. They're just trying out different ideas. They're trying to learn, which is what the whole point of the program is. So I wanted to go ahead and bring that in. I'm going to throw up those images. And then I have some other ones. Like I'm going to spread them out to talk about them on different podcast episodes. And... What else? I have, well, I have some other ones. They're not all Science Olympiad. These are projects that I did. They used to be on my old website. I didn't really have a place for them um, because they weren't really just a blog post. It was kind of like, a, it wasn't like Tumblr, but it was sort of like that were just some images like, all right, that's what I'm doing this weekend. And now I'm trying to expand the site and make it a little bit more professional and like a well-run blog. So instead of me just throwing a bunch of photos back up with little to no context, I figured I'd talk about them on the episode, and when I fill out the show notes, when I get caught up with that, I'll go ahead and they will live on the site. So, a lot of that stuff's being transferred over. I had a lot of professional papers, and that slows down my progress because professional papers are hard to read. Even if I wrote them, I still have to like fact check, like, hmm, second thought, I'd come back to this a month later, maybe that math doesn't work out. Or, and then I have to check and it does, and then I'm like, okay, well, then I need to reword the sentence so that it's clearer. And so I'm making minor changes, or there might have just been a misspelling. Um, so I'm cleaning those up. I'm publishing them on Apple News to see if anyone's interested. And to be honest, people are more interested in, like, general. I get more shares from just general tech articles. Like, hey, this is what you need to do this. Compared to, okay, well, here's something really cool about using programming and guitar amplification something that I spent a lot of time on and I thought was like the best research paper I've ever done. And it's too long. It's too long and it's too hard to read. And a lot of people don't grasp the technical aspects. 
All right, so I have some of these paid birds that I've been putting up, and I'm almost done with most of the hard ones. Some of them were just coding projects, which, I, like, I'm just throwing up a little bit of the notes, like the release notes They were just projects. Okay, this is what the program does if you want to download the code. Um, so I'm almost caught up with those. Once I'm done, I have to do the show notes for Dad Strength Podcast and Socially Numb Podcast, which both of these are pretty much um, in a good spot. I just have to go back through and listen and start to throw them up. I didn't start to throw them up yet because I've been posting everything chronologically in chronological order. So even though I have a bunch of the show notes ready for both podcasts, I'm still a little bit behind in my tech. So this is what I did. When I used to run the site, I had a bunch of old posts dating back to, ooh, when did I start the site? 2007. And of course, like I said, they, a lot of them were Tumblr style. So a lot of the images that I'm throwing up here, they're not the highest quality. They're like little 600 pixel images that I took on my phone or something. Now, to keep the source material as close as possible, instead of me trying to source the date, uh, because going back to my old site, and you can look back in the Wayback Machine, they do have a picture of it in like from 2009, I think. So I had, or maybe it was 2010 or 11. Um, but anyway, it took me a while. So with the first site, it was pretty bad. I didn't know HTML coding or databases. I was pretty much programming a static page that was full of images. I was using those static images to basically be the website. So everything was an image. I'm sure it wasn't accessible at all because I, I had a friend that was going to help me and then he kind of bailed. So I, I just taught myself. And so the Wayback Machine has the second or third iteration of my site. I want to say that it's in Drupal because it looks like that's what I was using. So I had moved over some of the images. Of course, it doesn't have the secondary pages. It might have some of the articles. I'm not, I don't remember exactly. But I was getting good enough traffic to be placed in the way back machine, so I'm really happy about that. Even if it was only like the front page or whatever, uh, there it was just my header. I saw actually what I did was I got one of those pressure pads that you use to like draw with on a computer. I just signed uh, my name R. Leahy, and that was my header. And then I had a silhouette that it was of the Pittsburgh skyline. I can't remember. I think. It was kind of like a Photoshop deal. I just took a picture of it and Photoshopped it out and made it black, but I can't remember because I had just started to play with that stuff on GIMP. So it wasn't too, too hard, like too, too difficult. It wasn't like a intense picture. I never had a good camera. So that's where these images are coming from. So now I'm much better at programming. So I have the site in a better place. So now I'm, instead of, like I said, just throwing up a couple images because like, oh, well, these these look good for a gallery. I think that's what I had, a gallery page of things that I, were, that I was doing, like projects, because it was basically a portfolio site, which is kind of what my site was up until I made this switch. I always ran, I started to run two, like the Leahy Report and this, but it's easier for the Leahy Report just to be the Apple News version. And they just put everything on my site as is. People are gonna find it anyway. So why not just make it more convenient? And then I can get a little bit more personal and tell some stuff and get a little bit more of my personality out instead of it just being a cold dump of a couple things. So that's what I'm working on as I do this show. The podcast will be a part of it, and it'll be a good start just to show some of the newer projects that I've been working on. So I didn't know the source date of some of these images because when you copy them and modify them, back and forth it changes their creation date so the dates are relatively new and I know that's not when these photos are from some of them have them but not all of them so I'd want to be consistent so I figured the way I'll do it is I'll just talk about them on the podcast even if like their episodes spread apart I know I didn't talk about one every week like, I didn't do a student a week in a row but they'll all be done and that will be it so Everything will be caught up on my site, and then my goal is to post 
like once a month. I've been doing once a month posts when it started. So I had started the blog whenever I was in grad school. Uh, what year? 2013. So that's when this new site starts. I got rid of all the old posts and moved them over into the podcast, which is what I'm talking about. There were some other ones that I just flipped the date on some of the projects because I had made modifications. So I'm like, well, I'll use the newer date. It helps make, can make it more consistent that I have a new thing every month. So I used the revision date for like two or three GitHub projects. I can't remember, uh, but they're all up there. And so that's why I've not been posting the socially numb show notes. I want to do it in chronological order and it's on there. Also in this site, I'm working on some sports stuff, some sports database numbers. So it shows up in Google if you know what the search, but I'm doing research on some of the professional sports teams. There's no links on it. It's just a page. If the robots crawl it, they'll find it based on my fake links for some hidden pages. But anyway, I have a couple, I'm starting with Major League Baseball, so I have a couple teams done where I have a graph that shows in, in, in ranking, ranking the rest of the Major League Baseball, there's 30 teams. So where did their payroll lie compared to the other teams in the league over time? From, I, I found a guy, his name was Steve the Ump. He had the numbers in a consistent format that a lot of people don't. Like ESPN had different ones. They didn't go back as far. Uh, they were like taken from different dates. This guy does opening day payrolls every year, so it's consistent. That's all I needed. Because the, even if like de- trade deadline or free agent pickups throughout the year, it's not going to fluctuate much from what they're going to the start of the season with in regards to trying to win a championship. So those have been up. Those are going to be coming. So that's what you can expect in the future as, like I said, we might, might, might migrate away from the podcast and just do some videos. So the videos will be hosted on there. And I'm still getting some good combat comments, some good feedback on my YouTube videos. So I'm definitely going to expand those. And... I haven't just 100% decided if I'm going to cut. It's not really going to be cutting the podcast. It's just going to be moving the podcast to more of a video format. Everyone says everyone's going to video. So possibly that's what I'm going to do. I'm not 100% sure yet, but that's what I'm looking at doing. Um, So that's where I'm at. All that stuff's coming. Subscribe to my Twitter and my YouTube. And... We'll, I'll keep I'll keep at the podcast. If you really like my stuff, go to Southbound Sports and follow us there. I do a sh- more shows on sports. It's going to be well when this podcast first started. You knew I talked about sports a good bit. I'm doing research, like I said. I mentioned this all the way back. It's just taking a while because I have a couple different projects going, and unfortunately, like Dad Strength is about to end. I had that one set to wrap up. That has some of the videos though. So those will help fill out my YouTube as I finish up that series um, and get those posted. Then next would be, if socially dumb, then all those would be in the same spot. Then at least my new material would be consistent. More from like the analytics, computer science, I can still do a lot of the advanced math on sports stats or analytics and go from there and make it at least be, I don't want to say, more of a consistent tech-based sport site because that's the direction I'm going in. I mean, video games, I love video games, but I've been playing less and less because games are getting, I don't know, I don't want to say they're getting worse, but it's just they're getting the same is what it is. You can play a a first-person shooter, doesn't matter what name is on it, it's all pretty similar. Like, I've been playing Doom, I have a couple Dooms down. I can play Doom, and it's fine. I don't have to buy a new Call of Duty. Doom is getting pretty cheap. A lot of people have mods and stuff. It's to the point where PlayStation, I'm close to just canceling my PlayStation Plus. The free game this month was like some game I'm not interested in, Just Cause 3. I'm sure it's great, but I'm sure it's just like every other game. And it's at the point where it's football season. Do I want to invest my time playing games sitting down when I could be going out to tailgates? Or I went away this weekend uh, for a camping. We're doing like a family reunion thing. 
So I have that stuff going on. It's fun. I would rather be doing that than sitting playing video games. Yeah, it rained. I played uh, the DS. I've been trying to do beat the Zelda games because I'm trying to catch up. I've beaten all the Zelda games. It's my favorite game series. That's why I was so excited to get a Switch. I haven't actually finished the Switch game because it's so big and I'm enjoying my time with it that I'm kind of just playing around and it's honestly, it might be my favorite game in the series. Ocarina of Time is hard to beat, but man, Breath of the Wild, just how easy it is to pick it up and play. And I can beat Ocarina pretty, I would say pretty quickly now. Uh, as an adult, when I played that game first when I was like 12, not even 12, when did that come out? 95, I would have been like eight. So like, man, this game, I go back to play Ocarina of Time, a lot of the bosses are a lot easier than I remember. I, I, I guess I kind of have some of the stuff memorized though. But here in Breath of the Wild, it's more free, it's more open, I can kind of explore. Am I going the wrong way? Possibly. It doesn't really matter because it's still fun and I can come up against some of the guys and I know like, oh, I gotta stack my guy up. But I'm trying to beat all the Zelda games to get caught up. And that's even some of the weird ones. Uh, there's a uh, another game I've been getting into on the Nintendo 3DS called Pie Cross, P Cross. Um, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's a picture-based puzzle game where it tells you how many tiles you need to switch over in each row, and then at the end it makes a picture. So I've been playing those games. I've had a lot of fun with those. Most of the original ones are really fun. There's a Pokemon one that they it's more about collecting guys and using their powers. Which that one's okay. It's a free game. It's not. It's like timed, and you can only play like once every couple hours. So that to me, those type of games, it sucks the fun out. Because I I like to binge, play a game like that. Because that to me that expands your brain. Games like that. I would rather sit and play the 3DS. I know I, I talked about getting that for my daughter, but now it's at the point where I play it. I've been getting into these games. We had a friend, um, actually a cousin of mine, tell me that about this game so he got me hooked and there's so many of them I've been trying to play what's that game Mimoto or whatever because there's a Zelda pie cross I didn't know about that you can only get if you have Nintendo coins which are their currency for playing digital games like Mimoto so Mimoto I play and I'm trying to get these coins so I'm up to like 700 coins and in, in like two or three more weeks I should be able to play that unlock and play the Zelda game of Pie Cross, which is another game I'll have to put on my list, another Zelda game to beat. Because I didn't know it existed. It wasn't listed on any of the other Zelda sites. They have weird fan-made games, which to me, those don't count. Even even if Philips did, Philips did the original release, the games that I've been playing on the um, emulator for the Philips CDI. I have them on YouTube. Check those out, because I assume those are like real games. One of them I might not be able to get running. But if I can catch up and beat a lot of the 3DS versions or the old Game Boy versions, those were the Zeldas I haven't really beaten. And of course, Hyrule Warriors was a Wii U game that they re-released on the 3DS. I was kind of wishing they did that with Splatoon. I was going to get Splatoon for the Nintendo Switch, but I heard they don't have split-screen multiplayer. I have, I'm, a fa I'm a family guy now, so like I kind of need that for my kids. I'm not going to buy everyone in my family a switch i mean i talked about possibly doing that but that's possible that's not i'm not going to pay if they don't let me play buy one game and download it like playstation does like five times i'm not going to buy the same game like let's say if i did do that and i said hey guys want to play splatoon i would have to buy like three or four copies of that game to at least two to play against someone and that's six hundred twenty dollars not worth it not worth it. I'd rather go play laser tag. I think my kids would go play laser tag for real in a couple weekends. Now, to me, I don't know how I feel or I, I just don't like uh, the way that multiplayer gaming has evolved being reliant on the internet. There's all that net neutrality stuff I brought in before where if this happens, you're gonna be paying for internet just to play online and possibly paying more. I think games, 
Nintendo with the Switch, they pushed for more multiplayer. They, they showed it in their commercials. You're playing locally. You're playing, I guess it's LAN over Wi-Fi, just connecting directly, I would hope, to a direct other system and playing a game that way. Well, with that, they should make an effort. I mean, this is a first-party game, so there's no reason why they couldn't push to have that multiplayer instance in their own game split screen. Like I said, I want four-player split screen when it's plugged into the television. I understand if it's going to go ahead and be docked, maybe not. But if you want people to pay for hardware, and don't even do it like, okay, so it only works docked. I mean, you have the 3DS where they put in the feature that 3DS doesn't work, the 3D doesn't work on a lot of games, and you get that option to turn it on and off. I know people were complaining, well, maybe they wanted, I've seen online people were complaining that they were like, well, maybe four players doesn't work with one Wii mode or Joy-Con. Um, I don't know. I never played the Wii U. Do they even have, do they even use Wii modes? But I guess it was like, they were like, it doesn't work if you're using only one Joy-Con. But okay, that what does that have to do with split screen? If you're worried about the motion controls or whatever, make it be that you have to play with a set. Even if it's two-player, which I mean two-player isn't as fun as four-player, but televisions, split-screen four-player used to be on a 15-inch TV CRT. Not even that. It used to be a television so small. And I understand the graphics aren't as detailed, but if you could play sitting in front of your TV with your buddies then you can play on a 55-inch flat-screen television that everyone seems to have because most of the televisions are 40 inches or up. So I don't understand why they're worried about not being able to fit or not being able to see all the details or whatever. Maybe people are just so spoiled, but then you don't even have to play. You can play online still. But I don't want to pay for a game, especially full price like Splatoon, that it seems like they're going to have... Okay, so certain modes are only available certain times. You have to play multiplayer. There's no chat. I can't I can't find like I can't find players or whatever. I can't chat with them directly in the app. You have to d- download like um, a, some different app, Discord or something to try to talk to players and coordinate. It's the same reason I had a beef with was it Battlefront? What was the Star Wars one? I think it is Battlefront. Star Wars was the game that EA put out last year that had multiplayer online but you can't chat with people maybe not even like in the the thing I tried to get it hooked up with a friend and we couldn't get it to chat directly we had to use a third party app which defeats the purpose to me I don't care about the interactivity oh someone might say something negative everyone's too worried about that stuff these days it's very frustrating and annoying and they're trying to baby people too much Okay, so you're going to talk, make people put their real names. I mean, you have their payment information. Put it out there. Don't let them hide behind a screen name or do something. They could still use a fake name, so it doesn't really matter. But, I mean, if you're going to have payment information, I would imagine most people use that or they would go ahead. I do with Nintendo. I use a prepaid card. But if you're worried about that, do that. Then you won't have it. I guarantee when people's real names get out there, they don't do it. Although some people still do. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Like, you can't police everything. So have people be able to play. And if, okay, so if someone's being a a dick, just put it in there so you can block them and you'll never see them again. That's how social media works. And then it's fine for everyone. I know some people go above and beyond to make sure they report different people. Just add a block feature. Block that person. I don't care. Well, I played Drawn to Death. Well, I'll talk about the games I've been playing and beating or whatever. Um, but you can go ahead and try to like play and not have to worry about who you're meeting and what you're doing. But that's just something that it's above and beyond. If you're trying to play, I mean, if you're sitting in the same room, but I can't play multiplayer, but then I can't play multiplayer in the same room because you didn't put split screen in and I can't play with my friends or do anything else because you're worried that I might some kid might meet a random person and they might swear on there or be threatened or have be trash talked. It doesn't make sense and it's frustrating 
and the direction that video games are going in, it, it just doesn't look good. Everything looks the same. It's been happening for a while. Call of Duty really pushed the envelope. There's a bunch of other... And it's, I mean, yeah, it pushes the industry forward, I guess. But there's a bunch of other games like Call of Duty that had the same exact graphics, the same exact controls and everything, and maybe some minor tweaks. But as soon as another game came out and added a minor tweak, it would be copied by the competition. And what you had was a lot of the hardcore players were playing the latest and greatest. So you would just have to keep buying games if you're playing on console. Or you just play an older game like CSGO on Steam. And that's where I'm leaning. Can't, don't, don't get PlayStation Plus because it's too hard. They're making it too hard to play, find people to play. And with the restrictions and everything, no one's playing games online. There are millions of people and millions of people download games. So you have to have the latest or you're not going to find people. Otherwise, the game becomes a, a ghost town. Resident Evil 5, I talked. I could always find someone playing Resident Evil 5. And that worked out, and I had a lot of fun playing that game. And the chat didn't really work. I mean, it, I didn't, couldn't hear what they were saying. Sometimes Some people had it, so I was able to talk, um, but others didn't. And, of course, that was on the PlayStation 3 I was playing. So it wasn't as hard, or it was a lot harder to get. Like, I had to have a Bluetooth, which my Bluetooth headset never works. Like, I never paid for very expensive Bluetooth headsets because they always disconnected on me. I never, I don't know. I don't think the technology was there. And it, I just gave up early, and maybe the latest ones do work and sound clear, but I'm, I was never the guy that just used one. I still, people, I still see people wearing them like an earpiece around. But other than that, to me, I, I, I don't. Just because, like I said, the reasoning is... They just don't have, uh, the technology wasn't there when they really pushed it. And once I get failed, once I see failed technology, I just don't believe in it. So, but yeah, this episode, I've been, like I said, I've been very disappointed with gaming. I've been playing less and less. Of course, football season's coming up. I'm very excited about that. So that plays a part because that means I'm going to be outside doing stuff. It's not as blazing hot and it's not as freezing cold yet. So it's a nice medium for being outside and doing things. And then you game a little bit less and less. And then pretty soon you're not interested in it for a while until winter starts. And then I'll see if I can get back up. I mean, there are some games that I'm looking forward to, like the new Mario game. That's a single-player game. I figured that would be good after I hopefully beat these Zeldas. I, I've been playing, like I said, just the math puzzle game. I, I'm going to say P-Cross. Picture. So P-Cross. Maybe it's Picross. And I mean, it's like a picture game, so I'll call it Picross. So Picross, I have been playing, and I'm really into those. And like I said, I downloaded this Nintendo app. I think it's called Mitomo or something. Maybe it's Mimoto. I don't know. It's one of those. But I've been trying to get the reward to play the Zelda game. I'll put it on my Zelda list as I've been working on the website and getting everything caught up. But other than that, no, I... I mean, I've talked about it. I don't even know how to categorize the podcast anymore because I've been through so many things as I've been putting it up. I was looking at, well, I've been updating the descriptions, like I said, and going through and doing show notes and stuff. So if you're listening to this later, because I've had people get it, find the show somehow, and I get a bunch of downloads recently, and as I'm doing it, then, I mean, if people are listening, they go all the way through or they can hear what's going on. But other than that, not sure. I've been so I've been playing games. I, I, I've been talking about a game a week, and that seemed to keep the podcast alive. So I guess the actual category should be gaming. I don't know if it should be video gaming because maybe it's hobbies because I talk a little bit about technology. So it might be moved to gaming and hobbies and just sit there. And honestly, that's probably where it's going to go because it kind of turned into podcasting. I could do technology, but then again. Technology, people like I'm not, it doesn't it doesn't fit under tech news. I'm not giving the greatest news. I started out doing social media trends and stuff, but even then, it's not it's not working out. So what I might do with Southbound Sports, to be honest, if you go over there, we have our big show, which turned into a live streaming show, which is actually pretty awesome, and getting good vibes, good feedback, and everything. So I mean, this podcast helped me get into that and get started with that and without this show the Southbound Sports Show would not happen 
but I am looking at doing a more quick form podcast only show for Southbound Sports, which might replace uh, or it might replace this show. And because, like I said, I'm going to go to video gaming and I'm going to I've been streaming them, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. But with the the show on Southbound Sports, uh, we're going to do like a quick audio only. It's not going to be video tied or whatever, just to kind of push the different formats so listeners can have ways. They can watch our videos. They can watch it on Periscope. The other show is a big, long podcast, but when we started, when I started Southbound Sports, I wanted to do more like common, as soon as it hits, like news breaking podcasts that weren't as long. But then it was like, okay, then we're going to focus on the city. I needed to set up that we set on some things for some teams to try to get sponsorships and a couple may or professional teams did reach out and give us their blessing to talk about them or whatever so uh, it's kind of evolved from there but I still wanted to do that initial couple minute topic one topic for a couple minutes mixed in with like social media trends and stuff where it might not only be sports it might just be like okay I could talk about Game of Thrones on it or whatever so I can do that here with this podcast, but this is more long form or whatever. So I'm not sure, uh, but I have started the transition a little bit to see. So I've been testing video games. I, I've been talking about them on here, but like I said, the podcast isn't the best format for it. And the show, some people are like, well, it's better if you watch you play. So I started streaming some games, just doing quick run throughs like I would do on the show here. Now the idea would be that socially numb is replaced with just my YouTube channel for me to talk video games and the tech talk technology. Unfortunately, that means that this show would end. It wouldn't go away. It would still be up. So if you wanted to go ahead and download any of the old episodes, it would stay up. That seems to be the direction that I'm heading. And I'm not 100% sure yet. So it's not set in stone that that is what's going to happen. But I will say that that's the direction that looks like it's going to go. So for actual gaming, I was going to bring in, I try to do the raids that I talked about on Pokemon Go. I haven't been able to do any. And the reason is, every time we go out to where there's a legendary raid, there's no one else there. I did see a bunch of people, but I was late, and I wasn't able to join, For so they switched. It looks like they're doing each bird a week apart, which maybe there's a new one in, but Moltres or Moltres, whatever it's called. They switched him out for Articuno, and immediately, that was whenever I saw people there, but I wasn't able to get to that one. Any other time we went out, no one there. And that was at a school, so it was a bunch of young kids. I don't even know, they were definitely all playing. But I did talk to someone there, and they weren't even able to catch him. So they put these legendaries in, Make it so that you have to play with 12 people or whatever, 10, 12 people. And then they have it so that they're very hard to catch. Meaning that you have to meet up with all these people. It's just almost impossible to play. And I know that kind of counteracts what I talked about with split screen for multiplayer. But these, this is an outdoor game. Could be raining. Could be in a location that's very inaccessible kind of. Like a, a park that might only have five parking spots and one little swing set. I, there's one that I know that's inside a community, so there's no parking there to get like 10 people in it. It's just tough. So unfortunately, until they add more Pokemon in the game, I think I'm done playing Pokemon Go. I hatched a bunch of eggs and I kept getting ghastly, got like five of them. And to me, that's just not fun. It's more of like a gambling and I'm not going to make a conscious effort because you can't jog and like work out while playing or it dings you for walking too fast and I don't get my steps. So you have to consciously walk around. And to me, that's just not worth it. I'd rather work out hard and make an effort instead of just walking around trying to play a game. Now, with that, I like I said, I might be bringing it in. But I, I've heard that they've made a bunch of transactions of people trying to make it. But just the fact that you have to play with so many people, I, I think it's bound to change and something else is going to happen and they're going to kind of cycle it out 
where maybe there will be one that's even rarer, not as powerful, legendary, that you can fight by yourself like a one-star raid. Because other than that, it's going to drop off like... I mean, it's immediately like stopped me from looking. I do know there are groups on like Facebook that have kicked up. Hey, we're going to meet up, but like it's 40 minute drive for some of them. So people are driving an hour just to fight. It's not going to happen. You have to have everyone in the group able to go at the same time. So that was one game. I started on YouTube. I mentioned Drawn to Death, so I'll talk about that one. I've been going through my PlayStation Plus games. Uh, What I've been doing, kind of like I did on the podcast, I mentioned it, is I play the game and give my first thoughts. Before, I would play the game and then give my thoughts about it on the podcast. Well, I'm just going to do it at the same time. So the idea would be possibly to use the audio from that and release it as a podcast episode. But to me, I think it would be better just to have it as a video. If people want to watch it, they can watch it on YouTube. I mean, the podcast app, it downloads on your phone, but, I mean, YouTube's on your phone, too. I don't know. It, it's just tough to listen to someone talk about a game without actually seeing what's happening. And I realized that a while ago, and I haven't made the switch to try to, like, get other things in. And I know it's a little bit more casual form, but it's kind of like more of, like, a video podcast. And I know sometimes you can, I could do a video podcast feed, but with some of the initial success of the Southbound Sports Show, it's looking like that's the direction I'm going to go with the video stuff. So this podcast will probably be ending soon. I'm going to keep it going for at least a year. So there will at least be 52 episodes, and I might put a capper, like an introduction one, that just talks about the way the podcast was and where to find out new episodes would just be on YouTube. But I'm not sure, and there's a couple other weeks. I think this is episode 47, so it'll at least go 52 episodes because I want a milestone to say, like, hey, yes, I did a podcast for a year. Not a lot of people do that. I think the average is 15 episodes, and it's not like I just quit doing it. It's that I'm moving it to a different format. I'm still doing a show. It's just going to be a little bit different because I can do some tech things too that I can't do on just a podcast. I can do some web design stuff. I can do some Raspberry Pi stuff that I've been trying to do and I teased a while back. And that's kind of just been the decision. So that video is up, Drawn to Death. And again, it's a multiplayer game only, no story, and no one's online. I, I had a video, I streamed it. I, I, play, I was able to find one match. Then the next match, I couldn't find anyone, so I ended the stream. And then I tried a couple other times, and that was a Saturday night, I think. No, nothing else. No other players, so I had to delete that game. It was a free game, and I guess it was okay to play. It wasn't as fun as, say, Doom online, but maybe just because Doom's more conventional. But i that's the kind of stuff I'm going to do. I did one for Abzu. It was another free game where you swim around. Uh, so that's up there. I'm trying to think. I think I did one more. I don't know, but as I beat the games, that's what I'm doing. I beat them too. So I beat the game. You can check the trophies or whatever on my profile. And I've been streaming them on YouTube. I got rid of my Twitch for reasons I talked about on here. So everything's been on YouTube, and that's where I'll be going. So uh, check that out. And thanks for listening. The last couple episodes, I'll be going through like some more projects and keeping you updated on the YouTube stuff and what games I'm beating and everything. And like I said, it'll at least go to 52. That's probably when it will end. So you can check these out or just transition directly to YouTube. And like I said, I'll probably be recording an introduction. Same with the dad strength. So that one's going to end, I think, at 50 episodes. And everything will be at Southbound Sports. So go over to Southbound Sports and help support us. Follow me on Twitter, Richie Leahy, and YouTube. And I appreciate it. And I'll see you here next week.